in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen my dear brothers and sisters welcome to our daily walk with mary today we reflect about our lady under a very special title that is our lady of last agony there exists in Viana do Castelo Portugal a shrine dedicated to our lady of agony i think we seldom have heard this title given to our lady it is situated close to the sea and the fishermen of that city in virtue of being so often in great danger of sinking from storms and tempests invoke the virgin mother under the title of our lady of agony this very situation explains why they had this special title given to our lady because it was on the sea shore and the fishermen of that city they are often in danger when they are going out to sea for fishing because too often unexpectedly storm would rise up and the tempest would disturb the whole sea and the boats and as surely those who are working in the boat the sea can be very rough near the coast so as they approach the coast the the waves become more dangerous and when stirred by typhoons has been known to the known to throw the fishermen's vessels against a cliff called penedo thief so when there is typhoon and when there is the waves are violent then the ships and the boats the vessels of the fishermen would be thrown and would be dashed against the uh, rocks and thus they would be in great danger when a sudden storm would burst upon the sea the families of the fishermen would go down to their dock watching in anguish the struggle for survival of the fishermen who were the husbands sons and brothers so when these typhoons arise from the house all the relatives wives husbands brothers sisters all would come to the shore and from the shore they could watch how they are struggling for life how their own are struggling for life on their knees they called to our lady of agony with a touching faith surely so dangerous was the situation and so heartrending was this experience for those who were standing on the shore and they prayed to our lady asking that those they loved would return safely with the catch that was the lively wood so their prayer was that the relatives or husbands who were working in the field in the in the sea would come back to the and come back not to empty and it but with the catch they had uh, as the fruit of their work so these were the intentions for which they prayed so earnestly and so to say crying aloud with the tears since about 1000 uh, 1700 pilgrimages to the shrine have been 
increasing from year to year. The year, as the years passed by, the number of the pilgrimages increased, and the participants also were so much on the increased labor year by year. There are more and more celebrations that take place, and pilgrims and tourists from many nations of Europe came to Vienna the Castello to witness and to share in the events. So it was a great, a great merrymaking and a great celebration they had. Of course, they had that devotion to Our Lady, gratitude to Our Lady, and with that. They also try to add as much celebrations as possible to make to attract more and more people to that area, and thus they were enjoying it as well as they were thanking Our Lady. Although many do not come to make petitions to the Blessed Virgin, so since the celebrations were so famous, so attractive. More and more pilgrims used to come, but there were many of them were coming there not for prayer or to ask, make petitions to Our Lady, but instead come for the pyrotechnic spectacle of fireworks and entertainments, and to revel in the festivities of a seaside village animated with vivacity and joy. And skillfulness. So they were trying. They were more and more enthusiastic to make the celebration more lively and more attractive. And more and more people used to come for the celebration. It was a time for them to express their gratitude to Our Lady, as well as to manifest, to make an exhibition of their own. Skills of fireworks and so on. Still, even the tourists are witnesses to the religious ceremonies, which includes a maritime procession in honor of Our Lady of Agony. So, this procession was one of the chief main elements, main factor of their celebration, and the fishermen used to do it with. So much real devotion and gratitude to Our Lady, and all those who came there to participate in the celebrations also very joyfully took part in the procession, which is organized by the fishermen. These processions were organized by the fishermen, and may visit the shrine to pray. And pay homage to the Virgin, who is known by many names, but is always the same and wonderful Mother of us all. So, what will be the title given to Our Lady? All those who come to hear her do have ultimately the same aim: to thank Our Lady for all the grace received, and to place all the petitions and their intentions. At the feet of Our Lady, and that the these fishermen and those who went there for the celebration were ready ready to do. Our Lady of Last Agony, to whom we owe next to God our restoration in the spiritual life, who gave us new birth, so to say, on Calvary, while her divine Son agonized. On the cross, deserves the above title in full measure. So this is the reason why they gave gave this particular name title to Our Lady. They say to her, to Our Lady, we owe next to our our God, our restoration in the spiritual life. So. Though we were dead, devoid of supernatural life, it was given back to us by the sacrifice of Jesus, by the death of Jesus. 
so it was the new birth was so to say on calvary while her divine son agonized on the cross this shows the above title in full measure so it was in the agony of jesus that we are given birth we receive new life her title is a translation of that of core redemptress of the human race our lady is given the title core redemptress the one who cooperated with jesus in the redemptive work of mankind her title is a translation of that of core redemptress of the human race since the work of salvation has for all of us is full consummation only in the decisive moment of death the full realization of our, of our redemption is realized only at the moment of our death till then we are progressing towards the realization of the redemptive work or the effects of the redemptive work done for us besides the church invites us to ask god for the grace of a happy death through the merits and the intercession of the queen of martyrs our lady is given the title the queen of martyrs and it is especially in view of the suffering she underwent throughout her life and very especially when she was at the foot of the cross there are saints who say that she suffered when she was at the foot of the cross when jesus was agonizing on the cross and her suffering was much more than all the sufferings of all the martyrs put together because her love for jesus was much more than all the human humans could all the love that the humans could give place at the foot of jesus so because of that she uh, loved jesus more and so her death his death death on the cross caused much more deeper pain and agony for our lady herself besides the church invites us to ask god for the grace of happy death to the merits and the intercession of queen of martyrs so we hope or we are advised by the church to pray to our lady that we may receive the grace of a happy death a good death through the intercession of the mary who is called the queen of martyrs how gratefully therefore ought we to thank god for having secured for us by the assistance of his mother at the moment of our death a palm of victory at the moment of our death we will be given a palm of victory and that in a very special way through the intercession of the blessed virgin mary it was through her that the grace of our redemption is imparted to us how grateful therefore ought we to thank god for having secured for us by the assistance of his mother at the moment of our death the palm of victory when did mary obtain the extraordinary privilege of procuring for those who are faithful in invoking her the grace of a happy death and the assurance of the eternal salvation as we reflect on this question from where she is she has received this special privilege without doubt devotion to the mother mother of god faithfully practiced during life is a sign of predestination and as such as she is for us at the hour of death the assistance of this divine mother so if we are real practicing real true devotion to our lady then we can be sure of her assistance at the time of our death how could mary abandon 
at this supreme moment anyone who has faithfully called upon her during life if throughout our life we have been faithful to her and invoking her to come to our aid and especially when we pray to her th that she continues to pray for us now and at the hour of our death when this prayer is repeated so often if it comes from the depth of our heart surely it will touch the heart of our lady because mary was merited by her own death the power of uh, succoring her faithful servants at the moment of the great passage from life to eternity that is the uh, very important moment of our life the transition the passing from this world to the next one from the temporary life to the eternal life having assisted her divine son during his agony and death on the cross she received from him the mission of assisting us equally during the agony and at the hour of our death mary was there at the foot of the cross she was so to say consoling her and so to say imparting her strength and courage to jesus to face all the sufferings and pains by her presence and by her the throbbing of her heart was really filled with so much love his mission of assisting us equally during our agony and at the hour of our death so as mary was at the foot of the foot of the cross so to say giving her full assistance to him at the moment of her, of his death so also she has given the mission from jesus that she comes to our aid too when we are in agony when we are at the moment of our death and thus to help us at the great moment of our departure from this life it is through mary that jesus was given to us when he came a tiny babe in the infirmity of human flesh wrapped up in swaddling clothes in order to save us jesus came to this world to save us and he was a powerless helpless little baby and it was our lady who helped him who wrapping him in swaddling clothes and rendering all the material service and help to the infant jesus it is equally through mary that on the last day we hope to see face to face the same jesus surrounded by the glory of the father the source of eternal happiness for us and after this our, our exile shown to us the blessed fruit of the iom jesus that is what we are praying to our lady in our daily prayer the hail holy queen finally we say after this our exile we are now here on earth we are in exile and at the end of this exile we are asking her show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb jesus she will help us to see jesus at the end of our life jesus is the fruit of her womb and that is our eternal bliss to gaze at the face of jesus a true servant of mary cannot perish because devotion to this divine mother in keeping us virtuous gives us a certain pledge that heaven will be ours it is an assurance that our lady gives that heaven will be ours because jesus has made it that heaven for us and our lady is interceding for us that we may become sharers in the merits of jesus Death is the crown of life 
a good life cannot end in eternal loss. If we prove ourselves worthy of Mary's assistance, as our Lady of last agony, she is bound to procure for us the special grace of a holy death. So this title given to our Lady specially emphasizes this fact that she assures us of entry into heaven, of reaching the eternal shore of our life. As Jesus, when he was in agony on the cross, Mary was at the foot of the cross. She has received a special privilege to grant us that favor of entering into heaven, passing through the agonizing moments of our own death. Let us pray that we may have a really peaceful, calm, happy, holy death with the special protection and assistance and presence of Our Lady at our deathbed. May she bless us in a very special way, giving us consolation, peace and joy at the hour of our death. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.